Reading right along. In ancient times, there was a saying that medicine, rather than the illness itself, is often to blame when death occurs. I believe there is truth to this saying, Ijema's perspective here. With only moderate insight into the ebb and flow of disease, medicine, me medical approaches are often devised by merely guessing, which inevitably makes matters worse. This is why Ijema formed Sasang Medicine. Okay? Because he believed there was so much speculation out there about the constitutionally affected ebb and flow of energy throughout the body. When it comes to Hamjue syndrome, if it is followed by significant sweating at the temple and zygomatic arch area, then even if medicine is not administered, recovery is imminent. So in other words, enough sweating means that the Taeyam individual will overcome their illness. If a doctor is sought at this point, it is possible that they would haphazardly prescribe medicine. If the temple area sweating stops and only the forehead sweating continues, indicating recovery from Han Jue, the doctor would mistakenly owe it to the effects of his own intervention. Yet, it, yet if after several more days of herbal treatment, the sweating at the forehead disappears, death is inescapable. So the situation has to be monitored very, very carefully. The extent of illness is determined by the existence or lack of sweating and the abruptness or delay of chills. Zhang Zhongjing stated that the recovery uh, uh, from Han Jue occurs without intervention. This is surely an admonition against the impulse of treatment, emphasizing the need to proceed with caution. While it is, while it is advisable to let the Changgam Bing take its course, if there are symptoms of epidemic or warm febrile disease, then this approach is not advisable. In this type of situation, it needs to be treated right away. In such cases, the illness may advance if the doctor chooses not to interfere by prescribing medicine, with the hope that the patient would naturally recover. However, if the disease and its treatment are clearly planned out, even in severe situations like warm febrile diseases, there is no need to worry. Knowing the person's constitution, knowing the ebb and flow of their energy, and following that with the correct herbs, compatible herbs for that person's constitution and that person's situation. Ijeva is uh, saying that there is a good chance that this person can recover if treated in such a way. From my perspective, if there is no sweating after four days of Hanjue onset, then it is considered a serious illness. After five days of no sweating, it is considered a critical illness. In such cases, Xiongdan, we talked about before, bare gallbladder, or Handa Yosotang, which is this one right here. Handa, Handa means greater cold. Yolso means lesser heat. Okay, so there's some heat here, but it's primarily a cold syndrome. The heat is brewing within the liver in the center, whereas the cold is flowing throughout the body. With four to nine pieces of qi chao. Qi chao, or holotrichia, is an herb that's used in Sasang medicine to strongly help descend stagnant yin, stagnant cold within the body. It's used often with edema, when the stagnant yin fluids are stuck within the body, either upper body uh, causing extreme phlegm uh, and water retention in the upper body, or in the lower body as well, in the ankle area, very common to see, uh, especially patients with uh, cardiovascular issues uh, to see edema of the ankles. So um, chi chao is, is commonly used for that. It's uh, a type of grub. Okay. If the stools are loose, then yi ren and gan li, uh, these are the herbs in uh, Han Yoso Tang, see yi ren is the first herb, gan li is the last herb, should be added. So yi ren and gan li are really good for treating diarrhea. Okay. And why would there be uh, loose stools in this case? Because there's too much yin sinking in the uh, too much yin accumulation. So what happens is yin is heavy, so it's going to just uh, basically just sink, uh, drop downwards, and continue causes continuous diarrhea. So what do we do in that kind of case? Well, we don't stop it. We don't plug it up. We encourage the yin to descend harmoniously. Okay, harmoniously with Ganli and Yi Ren. 
If the stools are dry, then gugun and daohang should be added. Okay, so now gugun and daohang are, are commonly used together for the liver heat syndrome, so liver heat causing internal heat syndrome of the tailum individual. Okay, so um, the liver heat syndrome uh, formulas often start with gugun as the king herb. And daohang in sasa medicine is used in smaller amounts to help clear heat in larger amounts to help uh, help clear heat and descend the stools. So in this case he's saying that he, in each of my saying that even though this patient has a Hanjue syndrome, he also should be prescribed Gegen and Dahuang if uh, he's, his stools have been blocked. In other words, if he is constipated for more than one day. Okay, so you can actually add Gegen and Dahuang to Han Yosotang. You can add Gugun and Dahuang to any formula to help promote stools and help clear heat from the liver. And it is commonly used as uh, added ingredients. If there is significant swelling at the temple and zygomatic arch, then it, it, it is advisable to wait until the patient recovers naturally. Only after recovery should medicinal herbs be prescribed in order to prevent reoccurrence. So what does it mean to prescribe herbs in Sasa medicine to prevent reoccurrence? Well, um, Ijeoma might decide to uh, continue with Handa Yosotang for another uh, couple of um, weeks, or he may decide to use a formula which supports the, um, the Taeum's lungs, like Imunomi Tang, which we will talk about in just a little bit, or um, Po Pewon Tang, which means support the source chi or tonify the source chi of the lungs. So we'll talk about these formulas a little bit later. Okay, uh, continuing onwards. I once treated a tame individual who suffered from a warm febrile disease. This warm febrile disease, you can think of it as a, a very strong influenza or epidemic disease, which began as cold esophagus syndrome. Remember, we're talking about the esophageal cold causing exterior cold syndrome here. He originally experienced palpitations, lack of sweat, shortness of breath, and a dry hacking cough. Okay, so this can be symptoms of the cold esophagus syndrome, right? Uh, you can think of this as a common cold, flu, or influenza syndrome. In addition to these symptoms, he had consistent diarrhea lasting over 20 days, indicating a serious case of external cold illness. The diarrhea is because of accumulation of cold toxin within the body, right? After two packs a day of Taeum Jui Tang, EGMAs regulate the stomach decoction for the Taeum individual with 3.75 grams of Chungun Pi. Chungun Pi is an herb which is very, very good for the Taeum individual's diarrhea. It's one of the best herbs there is. And this is where we're talking about the excessive diarrhea. Uh, diarrhea that is um, forceful and excessive, okay? His diarrhea completely ceased after using this herb. Throughout the entire 30 days of ingesting this decoction, he continued to sweat profusely from his face and eventually overcame his other symptoms. Unexpectedly, however, all five members of his family were infected by the same warm febrile disease, and he was not given uh, the medicine I prescribed. Shortly afterwards, he contracted another warm febrile disease, from a family member and couldn't even eat the slightest bit of food. As soon as I was informed of his condition, I prescribed Taeum Jui Tang. This is Taeum Jui Tang right here. With uh, 3.7 grams, 5 grams of Shung Ma. Okay, this is considered Han Don. Okay, 3.75 is one Don, D-O-N. And Huang Chin. For another 10 days, he started to perspire profusely from his face, recovering slightly from his warm febrile disease. He then experienced a bout of constipation for two days, so I prescribed Kalgen Sengi Tang. Kalgen Sengi Tang. Okay. Kalgen Sengi Tang. Uh, for a further five days. Within this period of time, his appetite returned and his symptoms gradually improved. I continued to prescribe another 40 days of Taem Jui Tang. Uh, with 3.75 grams of Shung Ma and Huang Chin. Accordingly, uh, he completely overcame the second bout of warm febrile disease and recovered from an, uh, all underlying illnesses. 
Now, let's take a look at these uh, herbs. EGMI is saying that this particular individual came down with a bout of warm feeble disease, but he treated it as an aphasia, esophageal cold causing exterior cold disorder. Why? Because this was the underlying disease was from cold, okay? So he used cold as the basis of this treatment. How do we get rid of excess cold, okay? How do we descend the in, okay? Which is saying the same thing. So he used Taeum Joi Tang. Taeum Joi Tang is used in Sasang medicine for a lot of reasons, okay? It is used for um, the uh, Taeum individuals, Tai Yang syndrome. For example, common cold, influenza, where they're coughing, sneezing. Uh, we also see with Taeum Joi Tang, uh, we can use it for uh, indigestion. So if the yin gets stagnant in the chest and, the, and also the esophagus, uh, it's very possible that this uh, Taeum individual will have indigestion as well. Difficulty getting down food, it gets stuck in the esophagus, they're bloated, they're not hungry for the next meal. Taeum Joi Tang is very good for even just working with the digestion, even if there are no uh, sinus related issues. Now, it's also used for epidemic disease, and EGMI is using it for this. But EGMI acknowledged in this particular situation that there is some heat, okay? And that's why he used Sheng Ma and Huang Qin. Sheng Ma and Huang Qin can be added to Taeum Joi Tang, and is actually added to Taeum Joi Tang a lot of the time to help with heat signs, okay? So for example, if we have indigestion with heat signs, uh, we may have, for example, acid regurge, acid reflux, GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disorder. Um, we may feel uh, um, some acid in, in the back of our mouth. Uh, we may feel fullness in the epigastric area or the chest. Uh, we may have some slight fever, even though we started out with a cold or feeling chills. Um, so uh, adding Sung Ma and uh, Huang Qin to this formula can be very helpful. And it is also called in that case Sung Gum Joi Tang, okay? Sung Gum Joi Tang instead of Tae Um Joi Tang, okay? So that's uh, one way to do it. And so that's what Ijema did and he cleared heat. However, he did not clear enough heat in this case because it was an epidemic disease. So it goes further quickly into the body. So he decided to use a a formula specifically to quickly evacuate heat from the liver. And so he used Kalgan Sungi Tang. Now let's take a look at these formulas. Taeyam Joi Tang is very, very similar to Handa Yoso Tang. Okay, Handa Yoso Tang also has Yi Ren Gan Li like Fuzu. Okay, uh, the only difference here we see in uh, Taeyam Joi Tang is the Xie Chang Pu. Okay, Xie Chang Pu is an aromatic herb that transforms dampness. So it's very aromatic. Very good to open up the digestive system too, the esophagus, okay, and the stomach. Okay, and also we have Wei Zi. Wei Zi is um, a really great herb to work with Mai Min Dong to help support the lung function. So this is an individual whose lung is being very threatened by this epidemic disease, okay. Remember in Han Jue, which, uh, you know, Han Da Yoso Tang, we see here, okay? Uh, we're not talking about being threatened by an epidemic disease. So we do have Mai Min Dong here, but we don't have the Wei Zi, right, to support it. Um, and the issue here with Wei Zi is if we have a heat, Wei Zi is very stringent, so it can trap in the heat of the uh, Taeum individual. So here we have Han Da Yol So. Yol So means that there's some heat. Greater cold, lesser heat syndrome. So we took away the uh, Wei Zi. Uh, in Taeum Joi Tang, we just leave it the way it is. We're treating cold, okay? Uh, if we add Sheng Ma and Huang Qin, we're clearing heat. We don't need to take away Wei Zi. Uh, only if there's a significant amount of heat. And if there is, then depending on how much heat, Kalvin Sungi Tang is a really great formula to extinguish heat quickly. Why? Because it has lots of Taohang. Here it has 7.5 grams of Taohang. Gegen, Huang Qin, Taohang, Sheng Ma, Jiegen, Bai Zhe. There's no warming herbs in this formula. They all have cool qi, okay? Cool or cold qi, okay? So that's why 
uh, he used the kagun sumi tang. Now because this herb is quite cooling, Ijima did not want to keep it uh, keep prescribing it for a long time. So as this patient started getting better, he went right back to Taem Jui Tang with Shung Ma Huang Chin to help clear some of the heat. Okay, so Kalgun Sungi Tang, when do we use Kalgun Sungi Tang in the modern day clinic? We use it commonly for patients who are having trouble with bowels, okay? Chronic constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, for example, Crohn's disease, okay? Leaky gut syndrome, where there is constant pain, discomfort, and inflammation in the bowel. Kalgun Sungi Tang is used for this commonly, but only used if this is a heat-related situation. We could have irritable bowel uh, due to cold uh, situation. So it's really important, or it's esophageal cold. So it's really important to know the surrounding signs and symptoms, okay, of what exactly is happening. So not, not just automatically go to Kalgan Sungi Tang if there's irritable bowel syndrome, but if there is due to heat and constipation, this is a good formula to, to uh, resort to. I'm going to skip the next uh, paragraph. It talks about jieke of the som and the teum, so you can read that on your own time if you will. When it comes to warm febrile disease, the underlying illness must be clearly deciphered. Only then can the excesses and deficiencies of the exterior and interior be determined. If the underlying illness due to, um, is due to cold, even when a warm febrile disease is present, it is still considered a cold-related illness. And this is why Ijima used Taem Joi Tang, right? Instead of going right to Kalgan Sugi Tang. If heat underlies the occurrence of a warm febrile disease, it is considered a heat related illness. If the underlying disease is minor, then the influence of a warm febrile disease will be serious. If the underlying disease is serious, then the influence of a warm febrile disease will be critical. So, no matter what, it's saying that a warm febrile disease is a serious situation or a, even a grave situation, okay? So uh, he is talking about here the yin constitution's progression of illness. So for the yin constitution progression of illness, it's important to treat the underlying cause, okay? And what we mean by that is the past. So we start from the past and treat into the present. So if cold is the underlying cause for a yin type illness, we need to address the cold first. Now, for the young types, because the progression of illness is so quick that uh, it's impossible to go back in time and treat the cold if it is already a warm, um, a hot or heat-related issue. Uh, this is why it's very common for, as we talked about before in the Soyang individual, to instead of using uh, um, Hyungbang Pedoksan to go right to Hyungbang Sabeksan or even go to uh, Yang Gyok Samwatang, which treat heat and only heat. So the issue is with the yin types, the progression may be slow. With the yang types, it tends to be too quick to treat the underlying. So we need to treat the here and now. But even if we treat the here and now in Sasang medicine, we're still treating the constitution, still treating the core, because all these formula, formulas are associated with each of the body types. In TCM, if we treat here and the now, if we do not treat the constitution, we have the danger or the, um, uh, the concern of actually making matters worse, okay? So let's talk a little bit further about the difference between a cold-induced warm febrile disease and a heat-induced warm febrile disease, okay? When we talk about a heat-induced warm febrile disease, actually we're talking about the body's reaction to the external environment, okay? It's not that heat just suddenly comes in and takes over the body for the yin types. The yin types, if you remember, are more uh, vulnerable to the cold pathogens, okay? Not the heat pathogens, but the cold pathogens. Okay, so let's take a look. For the uh, cold-induced warm febrile disease, cold-induced, we have the cold coming in from the outside. Now, if this was a typical Taiyang syndrome, you see just a few uh, uh, of these pathogens trying to work their way in the body. But with the epidemic disease, or the warm febrile disease, you're going to see an overwhelming amount of cold entering the body. 
So in the cold induced way, what you're going to see is that there's so much cold and it's coming into the body so quickly that the liver has no chance of developing heat, developing yang, and bringing it upwards to fight this off. Okay? Um, this might be the case where the tame individual's liver is already weakened or there's just so much cold trying to get its way in that there's no chance. It's happening too quickly, too quickly, too fast. In this scenario, we have, uh, again, a lot of cold trying to get into the body. But the liver responds by sending a lot of heat upwards, okay? The liver is overwhelmed but it's still producing uh, heat. So it's going to produce tons and tons of heat. We have heat going up, 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 everywhere. And so what you're having is that you're having this um, battle going on inside the body between cold and this extreme heat coming from the liver. And this is where you have heat-induced warm feeble disease. In this case, the song nature is influenced, right? Song nature. In this case, the jong nature, okay? So this is the Tame individual, uh, the Jung nature of the Tame individual on balance, which means that there is no calmness, there is no relaxation, they are extremely nervous, okay, and anxious. And here we have um, uh, the Tame individual who has lost their joy, um, who has lost their sense of happiness, and uh, cannot find a way through their situation. So this can happen so quickly, for example, if the epidemic hits us extremely quickly, of course we're going to be overwhelmed and not be able to find our way through this situation unless we have a flicker of hope uh, from medicine, from somebody we love, uh, that type of thing.